Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Today, we're going to figure out the answer to a very important question. Do you actually need to prime plastic minis? And while we're at it, do you really need to varnish them? Let me introduce you to the lads. Seven teams of orbital drop troops are ready for service. These goblins are painted in goblin green, but maybe not for long. Some of these were primed, some of these were varnished, and some of these were not. Here's the experiment. In the name of science, these drop troopers are going to fall from the height of a whippy stick many, many times. We've got solo jumps, and we've got large-scale invasions. We've also got a lot of rattling around in the troop ship as it travels the warp. These lads have all been through the ringer. Grot troopers lead an exciting life. The rides are fun and bumpy, and each grot really gets to know his fellows. And when the ship drops out of the warp and into real space, well, it's normally about time to do another drop. Each drop team has five grots. For this experiment, three drop teams got primed with spray paint, three teams were not primed, and one team got primed with Steinal Res through an airbrush. I primed in gray. One day after priming, all seven teams were given two even coats of Goblin Green through the airbrush. This is Vallejo Game Air Goblin Green. And just as the primer was given a full 24 hours to cure, the Goblin Green was also given 24 hours to dry. One day after the green, two teams were varnished with rattle can satin, and two teams were varnished with airbrush satin. Three teams were not varnished. Four or five days after the final coat, the drop teams were put to the test. I chose these goblin models because they seemed pretty sturdy. I had a lot of them, and they were identical. After they've done a tour of duty in the name of science, I may be able to find a good home for them in one of my projects. That's assuming they survive, of course. I wasn't too scientific with my methods for roughing them up, but they got dropped a lot, and they got rattled around inside a box a lot. All 35 models got basically the same treatment. So what's the answer? Do we need to prime our minis? Do we need to varnish them? I checked the models out after 10 minutes of moderate abuse. The damage wasn't as bad as I had expected. So I gave them all another 15 minutes of very heavy abuse. I checked the labels on their bases to break the grots back into their squads. Real quick, I ranked the five grots in each team from least damaged on the left to most damaged on the right. Let's check the effect of priming. None of these models was varnished. Here we're comparing no primer, airbrush primer, and spray can primer. In this next matchup, we check the effect of varnish. None of these models were primed. One group wasn't varnished, one was varnished with a rattle can, and the third group was varnished with the airbrush. If you're the type of person who thinks about varnishing your models, you're probably also the kind of person who's going to make sure to prime them. These three groups were primed with the rattle can. Again, one was not varnished, one was varnished with the rattle can, and one was varnished with the airbrush. It seems like the minis in all seven squads took light damage. Surprisingly, there wasn't much difference between the groups. Priming didn't really help, and neither did varnish. Of course, there's plenty of other ways that you could run these tests. There's probably some stuff I could have done with sand, or rocks, or Cheeto dust, or grease, or maybe the abrasion from foam packing material. That being said, the stress test that I gave these goblins was no joke. I gave them 15 full minutes of this. Most minis would have broken in a dozen places after this kind of treatment, but these goblins are solid. They took this abuse surprisingly well. 15 minutes is an eternity when your little goblin buddies are in constant danger. I think this test was a pretty good analog for the type of risk that minis face when they're stored and transported in a shoebox, or when they're accidentally dropped, or when handfuls of them are scooped off the game table. I also took a dental pick and tried scraping the minis. Again, the unprimed and unvarnished goblins held up surprisingly well. Before I forget to say it, of course I know that plastic, metal, and resin minis all have different properties. This test and the results are applicable only to polystyrene models. There are many types of paint and primer and varnish out there, and there are many ways to damage a paint job. 
there are infinite variations of this silly little test. I've gotta believe that unprimed, unvarnished models do have weaknesses that I wasn't able to uncover with this experiment. That being said, I definitely learned something today. Primer and varnish may not be as important as I thought they were. When somebody tells me that they don't prime their plastic minis, well, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Personally, I always prime my minis, and I varnish maybe half of the time. You're supposed to prime your minis, right? It is known. This is the way. Well, today's results were eye-opening for me. I decided to take an extra goblin and try painting onto bare plastic. I don't think I've painted an unprimed mini since 1999, so I wanted to see how it felt. Is the texture of bare plastic more difficult to paint on? Painting on matte surfaces certainly is different than painting on glossy surfaces. Where does unprimed polystyrene fit into that? If we could cut out the priming step, we could save time and money. Also, some details on our minis might end up just a tiny bit sharper. As far as undercoat colors go, gray is pretty useful. I found the experience of painting onto plastic pretty easy. It didn't seem all that much different from painting onto a primed surface. My mind was getting blown. Why have I been priming all this time? And then finally I found a weakness to this style of unprimed painting. The somewhat fresh paint is very easy to rub off, even if it looks dry. I double checked on the test minis that had been dry for 5 days, and the paint didn't rub off like this. But on the somewhat fresh paint job, those colors came right off. This seems like an inconvenience when you're painting up a model, and it's enough of a justification for me to keep priming all of my minis. The 36 goblins who appeared in today's videos were plopped into LA's Totally Awesome and Ultrasonicated. I was able to get the paint and primer off and get these goblins ready for their next adventure. The only lasting damage on any of these models was one helmet spike that I broke when I dropped my painting handle during priming. All of the other brave little troopers are in tip-top condition. To me, the overall message from today is that we shouldn't treat our friends differently if they choose not to prime their minis. I'm still going to prime my models, but it seems like this step is less important than we're led to believe. So there we go, I hope this was useful. Like, subscribe, and come back again soon.